Hey there, I uh, quickly want to go over both my uh, Robinhood uh, portfolio and my Charles Schwab portfolio. Um, just kind of show you where I'm at for the week. Um, today was obviously a green day. Um, this is over the last week. Um, so over the last month. Last three months. Uh, this is like it's since I, my account started back in June of last year, um, roughly. So um, I am up about 18%, supposedly. Not sure about those numbers, but I'm going to go with them for now. Um, so these are my options I currently have. I've sold some options on Monday, and I sold some options again today. And I still have some positions I don't have covered yet. So, so far this week, on Monday and Tuesday, I think I've sold about... Four hundred and fifty dollars worth of options this week, and so, and I probably have a, I would say about another ten to twelve positions uncovered. So I'm probably looking to sell options on those tomorrow, if I can. I really like to sell options on a stock having a green day, and as well as um, it has to fit into what makes sense. Like it's going to pay me enough to put my money at risk. Um, you know, if it's not going to give me at least some money. Um, I'm just going to hold it. Um, if it's too close to my strike price that I feel comfortable with, I just won't sell the option. And so, um, doesn't mean I'm always right, but I try to, uh, my goal right now is just try to hold my stocks as much as I can and not let them, uh, let them, uh, go to, uh, be taken away if my strike price is met. And so right now I, um, these are options, cl um, closing on uh, Friday the 5th, June 5th. Um, we have uh, MET I sold today, ET I sold last week. Those are two positions, and then I have ET at a nine dollar strike price. The two positions, and then ten positions at an eight dollar strike price. So I'm going to have to probably rotate out of that again this week. I'm going to try to see if I can push it far enough back to where I can get it to an eight fifty strike price, and then I could hopefully eventually get ahead of it and let the option expire. Is always my goal. Um, Sometimes I will rotate it, even though it is um, going to, if if it's going to expire, um, but usually not. And honestly, I feel more comfortable letting it expire, just because it's less risk over the weekend, coming back on Monday and seeing where the stocks are at. Even though you can probably make a little bit more money doing it on Friday, but a lot of times lately, too, we've been having very green Mondays, and that allows you to take that gain before you sell your option. Um, so I sold Dow today. It was down. So I think I got about $15 for that, and it's down to a penny. So it was down today. Or it was up early, and it dropped. OLN's a new position for me. Um, I'll show you that stock here in just a minute. And I sold an option for Friday, and I think I got around uh, $0.10, cents, and it's obviously up because it went up in uh, value. Or $0.10 cents per share, so it's $10 for the uh, position. BP, I'm st I sold that last week, and that's um, a $25 uh, strike price on Friday. Altaria Group, I sold it for uh, $40.50 strike price today. TNA, I sold on Monday. I got around $72 for that position, I believe. And then I have UPRO. Um, I'm way behind on that one. Uh, it looks like it's expiring next week, this option. I'm going to look at it around Friday or so to see if I can roll it out farther and to raise my strike price. And so, so if I raise my strike price a dollar, that's a hundred dollars more of gain I can get in my into my uh, into my uh, option. And so, like if I raise it up to forty forty dollars and fifty cents, I could gain an extra hundred dollars. And then a lot of times I'll do it, and I'll also co collect some premium. So we'll see if I can do that. And that obviously, that U Pro is a triple weighted, so there's a lot of uh, premium in that. And then the rest of these AIG, I'm still behind. And that expires on the 19th. Um, and then EPD is also, I'm behind, it expires on the, on the 19th as well, or the, yeah, 19th as well. And the rest of them are options I own. So, real quick, you know, my portfolio, real quick. You know, I have, these are the top ones. I think I moved them to the top because they're uncovered. Um, so at and still uncovered, um, Key Corp, which is a bank stock, uh, Viacom, CBS is uncovered, um, Pfizer, the reason I, I didn't sell Pfizer because it was down so much on Friday, I knew that it would probably bounce back up this week, 
and so I'm leaving it uncovered until at least probably tomorrow I'll look at it again and um, see where the strike price is at and where I'm at. Um, here at Packard, it's bouncing back up after it dropped a couple dollars last week. AGNC, um, I'm looking to sell a cover on that. I'm not sure. It was down today, I think is why I didn't know. The numbers just didn't look good to me. And so, um, and the rest of these I believe I have, um, I believe I have options on. Let's see, sometimes I get confused because I have the similar stocks in my, in my, um, Charles Schwab account. So it gets kind of confusing if I've sold them or not. Um, let's see here. Uh, MET I have. Main is not an option stock. It's a dividend stock. Any capital stock. BP I have. EPD I have. OLN I have. ET I have. And then Starwood. That's just one stock. And then I have, um, FHN, which is a, uh, Here's OLN. I said I was going to show it to you. So, OLN is a chemical company. Really healthy dividend. And it's been up a lot, of course, trying to buy this where it gets too high. Um, in the last week, I sold the $14 call. You can see here, it's dropped off quite a bit. Um, it's, it's down two. So, it's not down that much, actually. It's down about... Uh, a little less than 20%. Nice, health, healthy dividend. And it's a weekly option stock, which I like. Um, I can make more money off those weekly option stocks. And the rest of these, I just own one or two stocks. Except for Upro and TNA. I own um, one position each of those here in my Robin account. And the rest of these are just one position each. So, yeah, like, I think I've said that I've sold about a... Um, this is today. Pretty green day for me. I like that. Um, about four hundred fifty dollars worth of options so far in the first two days of the week. And so real quick here, let me see if I can get over to my Charles Schwab account. Yeah, right here. And so it's the first time I think I've showed this on uh, on um, YouTube. But yeah, so we're looking at here. Uh, this is my total value at the top. And these are my positions, um, 200 shares, um, AT&T, AIG, 100 shares, Aries Capital, 100 shares, Dow, 100 shares, ET, 500 shares. Like I said, I have way too much ET. Uh, EPD, I'm just starting to build a position on this. So right now I just have 13 shares. I really like EPD. I like its, where its cost base is right now. I like that it's a, it's a, um, it's obviously a dividend stock as well as a uh, weekly option stock. Um, Exxon, that's moving up closer to my strike price at a really green day, which I'm not too excited about getting too close to my strike price. I love the green day, but don't want to get too close to my strike price, which it looks like it's climbing on. We'll look at it here in a second. Uh, GM, I own. Uh, I was talking about rotating out of this, but I still own my GM stocks, and they've been glowing up, so I've been holding it, and I own 100 shares. I have Key Corp as well in this. I own 100 shares. Um, Kinder Morgan, I own 100 shares. It's a weekly. Uh, I sold an option on that today. MET, I also own here, which is an insurance stock. Uh, MetLife. Um, I still have 100 shares of NRZ. It's right here. Um, I haven't sold many options on lately. It's a monthly option. I'm just kind of collecting the. The, the weekly dividend on that and so I might rotate out of that the dividends pretty low right now um, for a REIT um, PBA is a pipeline stock I don't know, 100 shares it's a monthly dividend I have 200 more shares of Pfizer here uh, PPL Corp which is a power company and I own 100 shares Southern's another power company I own 100 shares Coca-Cola um, I own 100 shares here in the Charles Schwab account UGI, which is a, I believe, it is a, um, let's look at it, UGI Corp, I believe it's a trucking company if I remember right, um, but it's a very, uh, very safe dividend stock and a very, uh, safe, uh, dividend as well, um, Viacom, I also own 200 shares, these are my ETFs, I just own one share of JLDI, 
which is GL, GLD with uh, covered calls on it. Um, TNA, I own 300 shares here. So I make a lot of money off uh, selling covered calls in my TNA account, or my TNA options. I have four positions. It's triple weighted, so it pays quite a bit. DIV, I'm not quite up to 100 shares, but I have 85. SRET, I have five shares here. SPHD, I have 100 shares here as well. These are my um, these are my options. Dow, uh, right here I have. These are the ones, uh, it says the date there, so Dow is expiring on the 5th. TNA, my three positions, I sold it at a $29 strike price on Friday in three positions. And that's its value currently, but you see price change. Um, it's At the top is the current value, ET, um, five positions expiring on Friday. And it's worth uh, two cents a share. And there's Chevron, as you can see, it's kind of closing on my... Uh, strike price and it's when it's up today so if it's green uh, right below the the uh, value of the option that means that it increased today and the value of the option increased and so on the red to the right is showing you that my option my money that my options are worth are has gone down and so it went down twenty dollars because the, the option went up twenty dollars and so the the way it works it's always the value of what it would cost to close out your option right now and those are the value of your stock so if it would cost you thirty dollars to close out your option then the value that you have to pay to close out would be thirty dollars and so that's how they value your options so you can see my options are valued at four hundred fifty two dollars that's how much it would cost me if i needed to close these out right now and sell my shares um, then that's what it would cost me today. It changes throughout the day and it changes every day. And so as the week gets closer, a lot of these will not hit the strike price, hopefully. And um, and that's what it will go closer to zero, if not zero. Some of these have a, a later strike price, like a 612. Um, there's GM I have right there. I have a covered call on that. Kinder Morgan I sold today. I sold the two-week one on that just so I could get a strike price that I liked that was far enough out of the money and to get a little bit more than just a few cents. Um, MET I also have here. PPL is a 619. That's a monthly stock. And you can see it's getting close to a strike price, which I'm not too excited about. And it's, uh, it's worth 70 cents per share right now. Southern right there. It's got a 5850 strike price. Coca-Cola, so there he is right there in UGI. So I don't have them all covered. Um, but I have a lot of them covered and so this is the value compared to that you get that put that with my other um, Robin Hood and it's about a, a little over 530 or not 5, 130,500 roughly around that range maybe a little bit more six seven hundred so just over 30,000 130 my bad 130,000 and so I built all of this on my this I did not build. This is mostly mutual funds that I moved over over the last uh, over the last year as well. And so I just was putting money in my Charles Schwab account as, as savings. I just and I uh, started selling, uh, I buying stock, and then eventually I went all in. And so my um, Robinhood was all money I put into Robinhood this last um, this last year, and literally small bits at a time: fifty, hundred dollar, two hundred dollar. Um, lots of under $100 uh, um, deposits in my Robinhood. And that's one thing I love about Robinhood. It's so easy to grow. If you have an extra $1,500, you can just deposit it, deposit it, deposit it. Every day you get your account and say, okay, I got some extra money in my checking account. It just really, I save a lot of money that way. I just get put it in my Robinhood account, put it in my Robinhood account. And I was able to buy, build my Robinhood account literally at $50, $100 at a time in one year up to um, 50 uh three thousand dollars and if I would have done that three years ago I started that three years ago man I'd have probably uh, probably close to a quarter million dollars in my Robin Hood account with gains and and everything and so but I will say that th I also do a lot of this money in my Charles Schwab account uh, is where that money went that I did not put in Robin Hood so that's where this cash came from is cash I was not able to put in Robinhood, but I was not putting cash in at the same speed 
is a ham and Robin Hood and is fast because it's harder to do in my Charles Schwab account. And so that's why. And so and, uh, options are cheaper to sell in Robin Hood. I still pay um, I still pay 65 cents per position in Charles Schwab. Even though it's free, they still charge you. Most platforms do. They charge you a uh, a 65, roughly 75 percent per position to sell an option. And um, and Robinhood, they don't have any charges at all, and they have no minimums. So it's really easy to sell those little tiny five dollar options for a few days in Robinhood because you're not paying zero fees. So I really prefer Robinhood, and it's easier to sell um, options in Robinhood than it is in uh, Charles Schwab. And most in Robinhood, it's probably the easiest platform I've seen to sell options. It's like super easy. It's like the easiest thing you could possibly come up with. And um, it's easy to roll them. It's easy to to do credit spreads. It's easy to do all that stuff. Robinhood is the, the especially on the phone app. The phone app, it's so simple. So that's where we're at here. So we're just over fifty three and a half thousand, fifty three and a half thousand on uh, Robinhood and seventy seven one eighty here. And I also have a, um, a retirement account, but it's all in uh, Tiro Price and it is a uh, just index funds, index mutual funds. And um, I don't really plan on putting that into the stock market right now. I think I'm just going to leave it where it's at. And that way I get diversification in stocks I would never own. You know, I never can afford to buy a position of IBM or a position of, um, you know, of, um, of Microsoft. But I can own it in my, uh, in my index funds. And so I let a manager handle it, not me trying to figure out when to get in and out of those those um, really high-priced expensive stocks. All right, guys, so that's where we're at. I appreciate it.